For more on Bitcoin, let's bring in the Money Guys business and markets analyst and Newsmax contributor, Seth Denson, and America's accountant, Professor Dan Geldrude. Gentlemen, good morning. How are you? Hey, good, good morning, morning Christina. And as we look to start a new week tomorrow, many investors may see that Bitcoin is down almost $41,000 per Bitcoin. Seth, let's start off with you. Is Bitcoin a buy, a sell, or a hold right now? I'm definitely asking for myself because I do have a small bit in Bitcoin. Yeah. Bitcoin, that's still a thing? Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> listen, if you've got it, hold it. Uh, if you uh, don't sell it, let's see what it does. If you've got money to burn, sure, go ahead and buy it. Listen, this is something that went from $40 to $63 down to $41. It's dropped up 10% in the last week. So this is not investing. This is called playing the market. And if you want to play, sure, you can buy. But if you got it, hold it. <laughs> Dan, your opinion on this? Well, Seth and I always disagree on this point. So look, if you believe in Bitcoin, and certainly there are a lot of people who've benefited from their investments in Bitcoin, buy the dip. It's down buy more. Certainly you don't want to sell. I mean, the goal of investing is to buy low, sell high, not the opposite. So I say, if you're a Bitcoin fan, player, as Seth would say, stay in and keep buying. I mean, I'm definitely feeling the hurt from Bitcoin being down this morning, so I'm not yet sure what I'm going to do, but thank you guys for the recommendations. Now we're going to look at states like New York and Los Angeles are seeing huge declines in tourism because of the recent spike in Omicron, while other cities like Nashville is benefiting from less strict mandates. Dan, do you think that big cities need to loosen up on their restrictions? I, you know, it's, it's really amazing when you talk about mixed messaging, how one city can say, come on in and enjoy our, what we have to offer. And then you have other cities like New York shutting down all over the place. So look, I think there's gonna be significant economic fallout and the cities that are putting a lot of restrictions are gonna feel that. And unfortunately, many of those that feel it are gonna be small businesses. So let's hope that these cities will do the right thing. And uh, yes, we have to protect people, but we're killing so many small businesses with restrictions. Exactly. I mean, good point, because many of these cities, a lot of cities really rely on tourism for their small businesses, like you were saying, to be able to survive. I've seen tons of small businesses, even just in my neighborhood here in New York, have closed down. Now they're starting to turn into something else. But Seth, how about long term? How do we get back to normal? How do we make sure that our cities are surviving, that our small businesses in our cities are surviving? Well, a lot of these, uh, we'll call them more left-leaning cities that have really put the parameters of, of, of a stranglehold, so to speak, not only on small business, but really their citizens. Uh, that's where this is hurting. If you're going on vacation, last thing you want to do is go to places you're going to have to sit in your hotel room, wear a mask everywhere and do all that. I think that this, this uh, pandemic has gotten most people over the last two years to the point where they're ready to move beyond it, recognizing we're going to have a new variant coming out every week at some point we got to live our lives and so my hope is these cities new york specifically is one of my favorite places in the world my hope is that it opens up i'm ready to get back uh because we certainly need to do that but that's going to be the key is is get off the neck of the stranglehold and let people live their lives exactly speaking of small businesses i know that we see them um, not around too much anymore but cd stores cds are being outsold by get this vinyl records dan first off why are we even seeing this all of a sudden? I, I mean, are, is it collectors trying to get them? What's up with these, <laughs> these sales taking a spike? Well, it's really a head scratcher to me. I, I personally, although I do have a lot of vinyl records, I actually have nothing to play them on. So I, it has to be something that's nostalgic. It's certainly not easier to play a vinyl record. Or, or a CD for that matter. So I would just put it up to people saying, you know what, let's remember those good old days way before any of these pandemics. Otherwise, <laughs> doesn't make sense. Exactly. I mean, I was thinking it must be collectors or people putting them up as, as decorations because I don't know if many people have the ability to even play them anymore. But Seth... No, Chris <laughs> Christina, Christina, my nephew, second year at Texas Tech, Chandler, I asked him what he wanted for Christmas this year. He said, Uncle Seth, I want some vinyl. This is a movement <laughs> among the younger generation. But I will tell you, I'm a huge fan of vinyl. Dan, send me your, send me your records because I got a player right there. And matter of fact, this was sitting on my desk. Oh my I, the best of Sam Cooke, it's great. I love it. Uh, and, and, but I'll tell you, a lot of new artists are now releasing 
uh, their music on vinyl. They recognize this movement, and uh, it's maybe like bell bottoms. It's, it's def back. definitely a movement. I've heard it sounds better as well. But you guys, do you think vinyl is back, back to stay for good? Oh, yeah. It's a classic. You don't get rid of it, just like you wouldn't uh, 66 Mustang. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Dan Geltrude, Seth Denson, thank you guys so much for being here this morning. Hey.